Um, so how many of you are in this situation? You share responsibility with somebody else to get something done, but you're not in charge of them. They're not in charge of you. But what you get done, your credibility, your reputation, eventually your paycheck depends on what you do together. Right? How many of you are in that situation? Anybody not in that situation? Because if not, this is going to be a boring hour and a half <laughs> for you. I've spent the last 20 years asking the question, how do I behave when I'm in this ambiguous situation of being in a team or collaboration network partnership where my performance depends not on just me alone, but what I do with other people? Accountability, job accountability, or role accountability is not the same thing as personal responsibility. So number one message that I want you to take away from here today is being accountable to get something done in a role or a job is not the same as your sense of personal responsibility. They are two completely different things. Two very important different concepts going on. And that's what it's important to understand for creating an agile, high-performance organization. Accountability, I use the word accountability, to mean to be held to account. So in management terms, the practice of accountability is the single most important reason for there to be an organization and for there to be a hierarchy and for there to be bosses and subordinates. Responsibility is a feeling of ownership. Right, take your hand and put it right here. It's a feeling of ownership. Right? Wherever you feel that stuff, it's a feeling of ownership. And uh, it's your sense of what you're willing, what you're willing to respond to. So where the first is the ability to account for, the ability to account for the agreement that you made, responsibility is your ability to respond. Accountability has to do with looking in the rearview mirror. Responsibility has to do with going forward from here. Accountability is external to you. It's about your agreement with another. Responsibility is totally internal to you. What's the first thing that your mind and my mind does when one of these types of things happens, big or small? Guess what the first, first place we go in our mind, guess what we do? Yeah. Say, who did this to me? Lay blame. Right? Who did this to me? It's a French, it's a French verb. Say it with me. Lay blame. Right? <laughs> Lay blame. Now, I have a very important question. How many of you are expert at laying blame? I know the answer to this question. Raise your hands, right? We are all expert at this. We all have an amazing capacity to, at the first moment something goes wrong to us, to say, who did this to me? And what our research suggests is that it's hardwired into us. And the reason I know that you're an expert at it is because it suggests that it's genetic. It's in your DNA. So you ask, why do we do it? We do it to protect our ego. It's a, psych, you know, it's a psychological coping mechanism. It's how we cope with having stuff go wrong. Right? So let me give you an example. I'm working in my office, uh, and I'm doing that one more thing, one more thing, one more thing before leaving for an appointment. And I reach for that place where I always keep my car keys as I head out of my office, and they're not there. And my first thought is what? Who took my keys, right? You, you do it too, don't you? Right. Who took my keys? They were right here. Right. Who took my keys? Or I walk to the uh, refrigerator. I get up in the middle of the night. I'm thirsty. I pad through the house. It's all dark. I go into the kitchen. I open up the refrigerator and it bathes the kitchen in light as I reach up in the cupboard and get a glass. And I reach in and I get the orange juice and the carton is completely empty. Right? And my first thought is, which one of those monsters I live with did this to me? <laughs>